Hey guys, welcome back to the Gallivanthropologist. We're really excited about today. I gotta tell you, I'm like super excited. There's like Greek mythology, which I geek out of, and you're gonna get to hear about some god getting castrated, and then this like really sexy goddess being born, and then we're gonna go to where she used to take our showers. So you don't wanna miss that, and you don't wanna miss any of the cool history that we're gonna see along the way. So here we go on the best trips to take from Paphos, Cyprus. Hi guys, I'm Turtle. And I'm Bear, and we are the Gallup Anthropologists. We're a father-son team of traveling anthropologists, and we're gonna be going around the world traveling to over 100 countries in the next few years. While we're doing that, we're gonna promote cultural heritage and ecotourism and a little bit of food culture. So please like and subscribe and stick with us because we got a really nice destination for you today. Our first road trip actually starts with Palipaphos, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago. And if you guys want to see that video, we definitely recommend doing it. The link should be down in the description. And that's really cool. There's a lot of ruins there, but don't miss out on the museum. And once you're done with that, just go up the road a little bit, this beautiful coastal road, and you'll get to a really cool site. Have you guys ever heard of why the sea gets foamy? It's actually a really funny story that started in Greek mythology and it is a product of Uranus. So Uranus married Gaia, the earth goddess, and they got in a big fight one day and their son Kronos came along and he kind of got involved and his mother encouraged him and so she gave him a sickle and he castrated Uranus and he flung his manhood into the ocean and that's why we have sea foam today but it also resulted in something happening right here and this is where Aphrodite is born and she comes out of the ocean in her birthday suit apparently the most beautiful thing that anyone had ever seen including Apollo who was up in the sky and lighting everything up and it started this love affair that resulted in children out of wedlock and all this other crazy stuff. If you want to hear a little bit more about that, go back to some of our Greek episodes. In the meantime, enjoy the view. We're up here at a beautiful viewpoint of Aphrodite's rock. And we tried to get there by road. There's GPS map made it look like you could go there by road, but it was this terrible dirt road. So if your GPS tries to take you on a dirt road to go see Aphrodite's rock viewpoint, don't take it. Uh, go down the road a little bit further. There's a parking lot, and then there's a walking trail up to a different viewpoint. In retrospect though, I am kind of glad that we took it and we, we stopped about halfway before it stopped getting crazy. But I'm glad that we took it because there's like no one here and I actually think it's probably better views than it is over on the other side where the official viewpoint is. And after you have a nice hike up there, definitely go down. There's a parking lot right across the street from the beach. And we looked around and skipped some stones and looked everywhere we could for a naked goddess, but they were nowhere to be found. Brendan did find something kind of cool though. This is a cool little rock. It looks kind of like a heart. I wish I could take it home to Caitlin. Um, this is a little too big for the suitcase, I think but I'll just leave it here for someone else. For our second road trip, we hopped in our little Kia Rio and we decided to drive up the coast. And there's a lot of really cool things to see. And our first stop was Lampa, which was very important archeologically.
here in Paphos we find a bridge between Kirokitia and Paphos and this is about 6,000 years newer. The technology has changed. They've figured out how to make bigger buildings and their roofs seem to have a little bit more stone. There's different style windows. But Lampa is pretty neat. It's very, very tiny little site. But if you want to get a whole picture of what was changing, one of the things that changed was now they did have ceramics so we are finding ceramics on the ground, which we didn't at Kirokitia. And then these large communal buildings start to exist. And uh, it's a really nice design with the fire in the center. And you start to get some actual art and some painting. And you can really just see kind of the evolution of this, even though on ground level, as we'll see in a moment, they really look similar still. So you can tell by the way that the one collapsed in the center that even their smaller ones were designed to be around a hole for the smoke to get out so that you could actually cook inside, which I don't think you would have wanted to cook inside at the ones in Kirokitia. So, but when they collapse, they collapse down in the center. So in a heavy rain or something, if your wood's starting to rot, you better keep an eye on the wood that's supporting your roof because you don't want to be in there when that happens. That's about the extent of the site. It's really not that big, but come to find out it was very important. It actually dates back to 3500 BC, but what they did with building the structures in the back is the first example of experimental archaeology in all of the Eastern Mediterranean, apparently. And I really like experimental archaeology and applied archaeology. I really think they're the future of the discipline and it's nice to see that they did this a while back and i kind of like that they allowed the one roof to collapse because as they let things collapse that's another branch of archaeology and we see what they look like as they fall and why they fall outside or inside and i'm assuming by the torque that they're going to get from that wood pushing like this that the collapse on these probably did go outside we can't see any evidence of that here but maybe in 20 years if i come back here we'll see those walls falling down this way and that'll explain to us what the assemblage looks like when we find something this old and this cool and then we were on the road again and while we were driving on to our next stop we saw like this crazy thing on the side of the road and it's a good rule of thumb if you're a youtuber to film crazy things. We were just driving on our way to this cool site in Paphos and we had to stop and check this out. So every culture has their eccentric person, right? It could be somebody who's very artistic. It could be somebody who's into collecting certain things. This person definitely qualifies. Um, it's got all this handmade art some of it's kind of like the mosaics you see in the ruins uh, but it has its own flavor a lot of it's hypersexual um, some of it the proportions are interesting uh, but it's definitely something to see and it's 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 pretty cool to see that uh, this is something you would see like kind of in like Ocala or something like that I wouldn't expect it to see it, to see it here but it's pretty cool So come to find out it's not just an eccentric person's house. It's actually the Cyprus College of Art. And all of those sculptures and other artistic things were actually made by the students and they accumulated over the years. And our next stop was more for Instagram than anything else, but it is a cool little story and a nice beach. Behind me is the shipwreck of Edro 3, and uh, it's not a very old ship. And 2011, they were taking a bunch of people over from Rhodes to Limassol, which is a nearby area here in Cyprus. 
and then there was this big storm and it ended up shipwrecking. Um, it's still really cool that it's this close and you get to get up close and personal to it. Um, and uh, the beach around it is gorgeous too. So it's a cool little pit stop. And we usually plan out our road trips really well, but the cool thing about this one is that we just kind of found all these cool things to get into along the way. The side one here is really dark. They have another, like, the kids just get in the floor. Uh-huh. Right? Like you didn't live long enough to be important enough. And they all still have the real little, the arch thing on the top. This one goes up. Okay. This one has a bunch of trash in it. Shame on people. Yeah. The Melites Forest Necropolis really reminded me a lot of the Tomb of the Kings. And if you guys didn't see that video, it is up here. It's also down in our caption. Super awesome place, and I just loved exploring that area. This is a really cool group of graves. Uh, it seems like every one of these alcoves has three different spots where there would have been bodies laying there. Uh, and they all have very similar styles. So they're definitely the same time. Um, there's little cubby holes and only a few of them have the little cubby holes that would have been where they left offerings or they left something from that person's life uh, to carry into the afterlife. Um, if I had to guess, I would say this is the pretty wealthy people because this is a, a lot more ornate. You can see some of the, the shapes, uh, the archways and stuff like that. You can still see some of that left. So this would have been a lot more ornate, but still really cool. So if you recall earlier, we told you we were doing these road trips in a Kia Rio, and in retrospect, probably not the best idea for going to Akamos National Forest Park because the roads are quite bumpy. I would suggest if you're going to do this, especially if you're gonna go deep into it, bring a four x four or ATV. This is the reason for the ATVs. Much more practical out here than a Okay, I want you to take this right up there. This? So we can get back to a road. Oh. Trying to get you back to a real road. Thank you, God. Good call. And it was definitely a better road on that side road. It was really pretty. It was a lot of farmland. And we got to this one part that really reminded me of the Lord of the Rings. And you'll see why in just a second. Welcome to the Shire. We just stopped along the side of the road to have some snacks for lunch and wanted to check this one out. I'm really surprised that part of this roof is actually held together. And I want to look at how it's constructed, but I'm not positive I want to go in. You can really see they were still using that same roofing technology that we saw with the circular buildings. Cross hatch, and then they put a uh, plaster, like a, a ground plaster on top of it. But this is newer, right? You would think this would be more early Byzantine rather than uh, late Hellenistic? Maybe, but I mean, by then they would have had better roof technology. So either these were the poor people held onto the remnant of the old building design, or this is that old. It, to me, I lean towards this is 2,000 years old. And the road that Bear put us on was actually a nice shortcut. We decided we didn't want to try those roads all the way around, but every shortcut sometimes comes back and bites you in the rear end. We decided we were going to take a side trip or actually try to just cut across the top of the mountains and uh, the road is closed, the only road that gets you there. So we are going to have to backtrack the entire way that we came, which is going to be fun because the roads are not very good. But maybe we have found a way around it. This is going to be our diversion to Enea. And we're hoping that the roads are decent. And that is the 
town that we're going to that we hope has a decent road. And that was definitely not a shortcut. We definitely had to go really slow. There were a few times where we had to deal with sheep and there were even some spots where we were bottoming out. But after all of that, we eventually did make it to a real road, pavement at last. Hey, it's a road, guys. Pavement, Woo! pavement, pavement, <laughs> pavement. One thing that I did appreciate about the bumpy little dirt roads is they were pretty much one car wide. So you didn't have to like worry about which side of the road you were on. But uh, luckily I had my navigator next to me and he was also like, wide right, tight left, tight left. And so remember, you have to drive on the opposite side of the road when you're in Cyprus. We are going to Aphrodite's Baths. They're quite crowded, so I'm doubting she's gonna make an appearance today. <laughs> Over this Greek and Cyprus trip, we learned a lot of really interesting Greek mythology, and there's a lot of really interesting Greek gods. Hephaestus is a very interesting character. So in order to understand this next little joke, definitely recommend you watch our ancient Agora video up here or down in the description below. I heard Aphrodite would come here and meet up with Apollo when she was uh, trying to get away from Hephaestus who was frustrating her constantly. Maybe he made her feel dirty. After a nice circuitous route through along the coast over here and then up through the mountains, we finally made it to Aphrodite's bath. And this is where she would bathe. She was born in Cyprus and she'd come back home to bathe and maybe rendezvous with Apollo when the sun was on the other side. The baths themselves were actually kind of underwhelming without Aphrodite herself actually bathing. So I actually found a lot more enjoyment in hiking around it. This looks to just be like a modern camp. But I'm gonna see if I can find out 13,000 years ago whether they actually used like wooden teepees here. I'm guessing not though. So while I really had hoped that Aphrodite would be there, we did get to meet some really cool local people there and I love to spend time with local people and because they teach you so many really cool things and point things out that you wouldn't have seen otherwise. Go, oh, the wow. goat on the tree. He's really good on the tree. Yeah. Yeah, these are wild goats. These are wild, yeah? Wow. They're so nimble. Goats are cool. That's our traditional animal. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. yeah. We haven't seen any of it in food. You guys don't no, no, they don't eat this. This is, you can't kill this. Okay. Good to know. Well, we haven't seen it. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous views from up here. See a little cross over here on the mm -hmm. island. Not only are the views really good, but the company is also really good. If you guys squint really hard, you might be able to recognize this guy. This is Sabas Michael. He's a three time world champion in Muay Thai. And we had a lot of fun, and I enjoyed talking with him, his mom, and his best friend. Well, we snorkeled around that island. We stopped by that island. Okay. And we snorkeled around there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's a big grouper. Right? Big grouper okay. Off that uh, little island. Like one of the giant groupers? Yes. Oh, I love those. We have those in Florida. Yeah. Um, a big grouper lives by yeah. that island. Uh, well, underneath it. Okay. And um, these are beautiful coves. Right. And, you know, we have, I mean, the snorkeling here is just memorizing. The 
this is the prettiest uh, site, uh, the prettiest part of the island to be on when it's a sunset. And the sun is setting on our Cyprus tour. Uh, we had a wonderful time there. I really can't wait to go back. Yeah, Cyprus was amazing and hopefully we will be going back relatively soon on our world tour and maybe then we'll get to see some of the stuff we missed, like North Cyprus. But either way, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video in our entire series. And if you did, like this video, subscribe, drop us a comment, and always remember to find, find yourself, yourself on the journey. journey.